David Anderson has become synonymous with global black wealth. Whether he's shaping policies at the World Economic Forum, playing key roles within political circles on both sides, mastering the art of building unshakable wealth on an international scale, or breaking down barriers so that black men around the world can win. David is the world's best kept financial secret weapon. From the ghettos of Southside Chicago to the Obama White House, to the homes of billionaire moguls, David's receipts stretch well beyond million dollar bank accounts. African royal families or celebrity inner circles. But I believe that they did something that all of us can do. David's true gift is in single-handedly positioning everyday brothers to become global millionaires. Why? Because it's about damn time we own what's ours and have a real seat at the table. Money, power, respect. I met Dave about four years ago. My first business cracked seven figures, and it was actually an interesting time to meet Dave because I oftentimes say you can't just be wealthy overnight. You actually gotta have somebody to teach you the game. And DA kind of stepped in and um, took me and my business partner under his wing and showed us how to kind of maneuver this very dangerous game that we play called business. And within six months, DA was actually able to help us obtain a $200,000 line of credit. And then six months after that, he actually helped us secure a $3 million line of credit uh, that we were able to um, obtain a real estate. After sitting down with David and going through some ideas and some concepts, <laughs> in the first six, seven months, I think we did roughly about $10 million together. It's an exceptional, exceptional program. And David did something for me that no one else had ever done. He taught me the power of global expansion and really understanding the importance of an international network. Um, and how we can build on that network. Him and I have done projects that surpassed the 20, 30 million dollar mark. My life has changed in more ways than one for the better from the development of our relationship. And I'm just so happy that you have brought me in to the fold and have shown me how important the power of a network internationally from a professional perspective or a personal perspective can be, and I'm ever so grateful. Hey, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, so happy to have you. I just want to know, uh, I know I got some people in the stream. Can you hear me? want to make sure you can hear me. I want to make sure you can hear me. So if you can hear me, just put real quickly in the chat, say, I can hear you. I can hear you. I know we got um, texts went out today. Uh, emails are going out, right? Thank you so much if you can hear me. Appreciate that. Um, man, look, look, I'm back today. Let's see why I'm back today, right? I'm back today because... Uh, the response, the comments, the overwhelming outpouring that took place, uh, having been live on Facebook, as well as being live on YouTube, everything, right? Thank you so much, our Reliant Care Management. Appreciate that, brother. Um, I think that we hit a vein with people because we talked about success, but from the Black perspective, right? We talked about success, but from the Black perspective. And how we as men, right, can win. How we as men can win, right? Although, no matter what we're going through, what has happened, being maligned, all these things in society, we can actually win. And so what I wanted to do today is put together something I felt that would be real quick, it would be concise. And I know a lot of people were like, hey, you know what? I'm doing okay. I'm trying to figure some things out. But I want to know about, like, like, how do you really get a real million in the bank, right? How do you really, is that really real? Like, how does that, like, how, how does someone go from nothing or a little bit, right? You got nothing in the bank or you, you know, you got 30,000, 50,000, 100,000, you got something, right? How do we get to getting an entire million in the bank? So what I want you to do, if you would do this for me, right? I'm asking you to do this. In the next 10 seconds, if you could share, like, if you're on YouTube, share it. If you're on Facebook, share it. Because I guarantee you in the next 15, 20 minutes, what I'm about to give you is going to be enlightening, right? To so probably some keys, things that you just hadn't been able to put together, right? Things you hadn't been able to, what I call, 
put all the pieces together, put every succinct, like put it, make it succinct so you can understand it. I'm gonna try to bring those pieces together today by talking about how you get a million dollars in a bank. How do you really, really do that? All right. All right. So please share this feed on Facebook, on YouTube, so also other brothers can hear it and they can check it out and look at it. All right. All right. So what we're gonna do. What I want to do first is this. I want to first debunk some myths about how to get to a million dollars. And look, I got to debunk these myths, right? Because there are things that people believe that are not true. And remember what we talked about this past weekend, okay? We went through a whole lot. But one thing we talked about was education, okay? We talked about education because you can have information, but it doesn't mean you have the right education, okay? You can be given, we live in a world today, and look, I'm gonna be straight with you guys, man. I'm even trying myself. I'm trying to learn some of these nuances around like, you know, how to speak concisely and sound bites and all of this stuff. Because we live in a world where, man, we went from, you know, watching a 30 minute episode right to watching five 10 minute youtube videos to like watching a minute two minute facebooks to now it's like 10 15 seconds on instagram so what's happened is that we live in a world today unfortunately we live in a world where everyone's consuming things in sound bites like little small sound bites but because we're consuming it in sound bites you know what's happening brothers risk real talk you always are getting pieces, little drops of information, but you're never getting the full context of the why, right? You never get the full context of the why. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the full context of the why in place today, right? In place, so you're not fooled. My heart is so that you as a black man are not fooled in how this thing really works and how things operate, right? If you're with me, I want you to put a 1M, put a 1M in the chat for 1 million. Put 1M in the chat for 1 million. 1M in the chat, all right? Thank you so much, thank you so much. All right, here we go, myth number one. Let's go to work, all right, let's go. All right, so, number one is this, okay? I'll bring this up a little bit. The myth number one is this, and don't believe this, because I'm gonna go through why. Number one is that for most people in most markets and where they live, globally, no matter where you are in the world, okay, you can't say to a million, right? Oh, sorry, sorry. The myth is that you can, sorry. The myth is that, so these are the myths, right? Let me put the myths, all right? The myth is that you can save to a million. It's a myth. Now, I want to be straight with you, right? There are um, situations, very, very rarely, right, where you got a guy, he went out, he was busting his butt, you know, working, whatever it is. His wife, you know, penny pitched, and she, over 40 years, <laughs> right, she put money in the mattress, and just put it away in 30, 40, 50 years, and she, and, and, and she put it the way to say, okay? That, that, but those are anomalies. I'm gonna talk to the, the masses of us, okay? Right? Myth, you can save to a million. Why is that? So when I was at JP, when, when I was at one of the largest banking institutions, um, and I was an investor, and I uh, managed at that time, right, $5.6 billion, brothers. $5.6 billion. I would say the average client was about $80 million, right? $80 million. I had an amazing seat at the table to watch this full hand. And can I tell you something? There wasn't one client, one person, not one. Look, I'm managing $5.6 billion. I come from the block, from the bottom up. I read the books got to Wall Street, got to some of the heights. I'm managing the wealthiest people in the region, their money. This is real talk. 
and about 70% of them were in business, 70, 80%. Some inherited the money, some were corporate executives, but 77% of them were literally, okay, right, in business. And not one of them has saved their way to their money. And we're going to talk about what happened, right? But it wasn't this, hey, they saved it over time. They put it, that wasn't happened. And look, I'm giving you the real, I'm giving you the real, the 100 on the truth. I was managing $5.6 billion of some of the wealthiest people in America. And I'm telling you, Brian from Louisiana, good to see you, brother. Good to see you. They didn't save their way to a million dollars in the bank. Okay? Right. Myth number two. Here we go. Myth number two is this. That, sorry, not, 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 not myth, but it's an explanation, right? Is that you can do it. The point, point, no, I should say point, point number two. I'm going to get better at this, guys. Keep praying for me. I'm going to get very good at this. All right? Life happens. Or better yet, life won't happen. That's the myth. That life won't happen. But the reality is that life does happen, right? Meaning that death, divorce, your health, emergencies, they'll tell you, right, in the money world, especially, they say, hey, you know what, hey, they make it sound, make it sound real simple, real good, right, hey, put away, hey, Kevin, put away 20000 a year, $1,000 a month, and it will grow over 30 years, and every time you put your money away, it'll grow over 30 years, this is what they'll say to you, right, hey, put your money away, hey, it'll grow over 30 years every month, but guess what? Life does happen. How many have had a situation in here, right here in the chat, where you, as a brother, had put away some money, you got up, you stacked it, you were real proud of yourself. You were like, man, man, I saved that money. And all of a sudden, something happened to you. And you had to use a quarter of it, use half of it, use all of it. Put a one in the chat. If I'm telling the truth, I need you to put a one in the chat, brothers. Put a one in the chat. If life happened to you, okay, if life happened to you, put a one in the chat. I know it happens because that's what happens. So if you go the 30-year route, the 20-year route, over time, okay, life will happen because life is created for you to spend, okay? Whether it's, man, your wife has an issue, your baby's mother has an issue, your grandma has an issue. An issue takes place in your life that starts to eat at your money. Eat at your money, right? So if you are banking on, just listen to me. Look, you can bank on that, but now you're playing the luck game. I don't want you to play the lucky game. I want you to play the strategic black man game, okay? I want you to play strategically in this game, okay? But they'll tell you, hey, life won't happen. Just put your money away. Just save it over time, let it go, just keep going. Yo, that's not, it's, it's not real. Life does happen. You will, you will spend and you will have emergencies. The other thing that happens to eat your money is taxes, right? All of a sudden, you do make, I mean, look, how many brothers I got in here, right? If you work in a, a job or corporate or whatever and you got a bonus, right? So you get a bonus. You like, yo, I got, man, I killed that. I got this bonus, 5,000, 20,000, 30,000. So you get whatever your bonus was. Look, I have a lot of employees, I know. Guess what I got to do to their bonus? I got to tax it <laughs> right away, right? $10,000 bonus, guess what I got to do? I got to tax it. So taxes eat your money. Life eats your money. And the events of life eat your money. Death, divorce, health, emergencies, drama, all kind of stuff. You get a flood, right? A flood happens at your house. The roof needs fixed. All these things come in, brothers, right? Right? Hey, if you feel me, man, put a one in the chat. All these things happen. Now, you're doing the right thing. You're doing the good thing. 
But all of a sudden, you look up and you're like, man, I got this bill, that bill, this bill, that. It starts to eat at your money and you feel like you can never get ahead. We're going we're gonna to deal with that today. I'm going to teach you the secret. The last thing. Yeah, I'm going to shout out some of the brothers for the one. We got David Thomas in the building. Uh, we got what? Dwayne off. Marcus in the building, baby. Marcus. Uh, Anthony McLean in the building. Tony Evans in the building. Hey, Barry in the building. Thank you for participating. Who else we got in the building? Okay. My brother Jimmy, Willis, Clark, Blaine, uh, Charlie in the building. Marlon in the building. What's up, Marlon? Man, Marlon's my man. Mar Marlon has been here all three days. Um, who else been here all three days? Renell, been here all three days, man. Coming to get it. Coming to make it happen. I love it, baby. Um, Want to give a shout out to Marlon, man. Marlon just, um, uh, one of our uh, uh, special things that we're doing. Um, Marlon's a great brother. I want to give you a shout out to Marlon. Great brother. Brothers in cybersecurity. He's actually doing pretty well. He's actually killing it, right? But he's trying to go to the next level. Man, I'm telling everyone on this chat, right? In, a, in six months or six months to a year, Marlon going to come back and Marlon going to be giving a, a major testimonial, like my other brothers, right? On how his life accelerated, right? Because he's taking action. So anyway, all right, number three. Let me get to number three real quick. All right. Right? Oh, Mr. Jackson, he's been here all three days too. I want to say that too. All right. When things, hold on, here he is. The myth. When things are good, Listen to this. When things are good, the myth is they stay good. When things are bad, they stay bad. When things are good, they stay good. When things are bad, they stay bad. Why is that a myth? Because how many brothers have had the situation where, right, Yo, month over month, you're making money. Month over month, you're making money. Like, you're doing okay. And then what happens? They change. One thing I learned when I was on Wall Street that really benefited me, because when you're in the markets, you have to pivot, you have to move constantly. Ready for this? You always anticipate the shifts. You always anticipate the changes, okay? I'm going through the myths before I give you the game. I gotta go through these myths, remember. Because of the education, right? I cannot, if someone has learned something wrong, I have to help reprogram you because of your neural elasticity in your brain, okay? This is why when you're not making money, brothers, hear me out. When you're not winning, when you're not making money, when you're not making it happen, guess what your brain does? Your brain gets used to you not making money. Yo, I'm talking about science. I'm talking about neurology. This is why the frog, you can put the frog in the hot water and they get used to, right? Hold on, wait, wait. If you heat it up slowly, what happens? The frog doesn't jump out because he gets used to being at that level. So when you're not winning and you're not making money, you're not making tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands, all of a sudden, you naturally neurologically get comfortable. But you're about to be boiled, okay? So what you have to do is that you have to shake yourself because when things are good, they're not going to stay good. And when things are bad, they're not going to stay bad. So what do you have to do? You as a man, you got to be able to shift. You got to be able to shift. Bob and weave, baby. Bob and weave, right? We just saw the fight. I mean, how, how many watched the fight the other night, the last weekend? If, look, if, if, if you saw the fight, put fight in the chat, right? Put fight in the chat. That was a crazy fight. A crazy fight. Why was that a crazy fight? Because the fight, homeboy, he came out. Everyone thought, man, I mean, he was, he was giving him some pain. He was boom, boom, boom. First two or three rounds. Everyone's like, yo, hey, he might, he might be, it might be over for my man. My man came out in that round. He hit him so hard, the man hit like you saw the life leave his face. He, that, he hit the ground, that liver shot. He hit the ground, and he stood, and he said, 
He said, bro, I got I to gotta end this. Because he knew if I get hit like this again, I might not live tomorrow, right? But when you're in this fight, brothers, we in a fight. Guess what? In your life, you are in a fight. You got a constantly bobbing weed. You got this pressure and that pressure, the job, your wife, your girl, your kids, your, your family. You got the, 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 all the stuff. Being, just being a black man in some of the areas we live in, every day is a fight. You bobbing and weaving. You bobbing and weaving. You bobbing and weaving. And so you can't get comfortable because we are constantly having to move. I was talking to a brother. He came into VIP the other day. And he said it, man. Great brother, John. Give a count. John's on this call. Great, great shout out to John. John's been a great fireman, man, for like 30 years. Fireman, right? About to get in this pension. Doing, he did all the right things. Played the game the safe way. Did all those things, right? Hold on, wait, wait. Listen to this. And John's like, man, Dave, you know what? This is crazy. But I'm watching my brothers retire from the fire department. They got the pensions, but guess what? The pension doesn't keep up with inflation. And so because the pension don't keep up with inflation, I'm watching them. They got to go back to work. And some of them working harder than they were when they were a firefighter. Why is that? Right? And that's why I'm about to show you how to get to the bag. So get ready. Let's go. All right? So you got the myths. The myth is that you can say it to a million. Yo, good luck with that. It's a risk. I'm telling you, I managed $5.6 billion. It was other people's money. I saw it. Not one of them who came in has saved their way to millions. Not one. I'm telling you. Now, many of them did not look like us. Let me just be straight with you. They did not look like us. And I'm telling you, they did not save their way to a million. Number two, life, that life won't happen. You got to expect for life to happen. You got to expect to be in the fight. You got to bob and weave. Number three, when things are good, they ain't always going to stay good. So you got to be ready for that. All right, here we go. One million black men. Here we go. Now, I'm going to ask you guys to level up. Okay? Whether you have a master's degree or you have no degree, I'm going to ask you in this moment to level up your thinking because I'm going to go through some concepts that might be new to you. Okay? Might be new to you but I need you to level up for me, right? Brothers, if you're going to level up for me, give me, give, me, give, me, give me a thumbs up in the chat. Just give me a thumbs up. I just want to know. I got brothers on the chat that are ready to level up. I, that's all I need to know. You're ready to level up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Let's go. All right. Number one, we're going to talk about a word tonight. It's called liquidity event. Okay, liquidity event, right? Right, liquidity event. We talk, I talked about this a lot in the money game when I was really happy in the money game, working with all these folks. A lot of times we talked about a liquidity event. What is a liquidity event? Here it is. A liquidity event is a moment. It's a moment in time. Okay, a moment in time where what? You experience cash pay. It's a moment in time where you experience a cash payout. The proper name for that is called a liquidity event, right? What, 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 what is this about? Because the way cash works, the way money works, ready for this? You have to have an acceleration moment. I'm not talking about the lottery. Lottery is real lucky. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you have a moment in your life, right? where all of a sudden you get cash accelerated. It happens through a moment, through your business, through a deal, through something that takes place. 
and it's called a liquidity event. Now, here it is. Number one, when you find, now how do you experience a liquidity event? How do you experience it? How does it happen? Well, everyone that has businesses here, especially if you have businesses or you got your business on the side, let me tell you what takes place and what happens, okay? You're out, remember the other thing I talked about, right? Being consistent, being consistent, being consistent, being consistent. Hold on, being consistent. Here it goes. When you find the niche, okay? When you find that niche, okay? And you're selling something or you're offering something. And all of a sudden, you hit like, it's like, yo, I'm selling this marker here. And people are willing to pay $10 for this marker, right? Oh, I've been selling my cybersecurity and people are willing like, I, I, I got to a country, I got to a state, I got to a city. And all of a sudden, we all, we've all had these, right? Well, all of a sudden, the market, people are willing to pay like more or you're selling your regular stuff. And all of a sudden, you hit an industry. You hit a, you, you, I, you, we used to call it hit a lick, right? You hit something. But all of a sudden, it's like accelerating. That is the moment you do this. You double down and you don't slow down, right? I'm going to tell you about two liquidity events that I, one I witnessed and one I experienced, okay? When I went, when I experienced. The first liquidity event I saw, and I, I didn't fully, at this time in my life, I didn't fully understand what was happening, okay? So remember I told you guys before, I was like 20 years old, looking after my mom, my mom, brother, and sister. I, um, you know, had gotten into real estate, right? Um, I had paid like 20 some thousand dollars to learn real estate, investing, went to Phoenix, went to this thing, came back, was like, boom. At that time, real estate was real easy. I mean, they had no doc loans, all this kind of crazy stuff, right? And so I ended up obviously losing everything, right? Because I, I just didn't have the knowledge. I didn't know what I was doing, right? I met this, this lawyer, right? Good brother, man. Well, like one of my first, first, first mentors, I went to work, I went to work for him for free, right? Harvard educated brother, solid brother. And at that time, at that time, everybody was going into foreclosure. How many remember the financial crisis? If you remember that, somebody put in there, put in the chat 2008. If you were around, if you're old enough to remember it, right? Put in the chat 2008. 2008, when a financial crisis happened. Put, put that in the chat, okay? And so we started, he said, hey, bro, come with me. He took me to his house. He gave me a government document about this thick, right? It was, it was um, uh, uh, the loan modification. I see you, Anthony, Marcus, Sean. Uh, yeah, a lot of y'all were around in 2008. I love that, a lot of y'all were around, okay? He gave me a document this thick, and this was the government's document on foreclosure and loan modifications. He said, hey, young brother, I need you to read that, study it, and break it down for me, and we're going to talk about it this week. This is a true story, okay? So we start getting into the loan modification, helping people get loan mods and get out of foreclosure, right? Or get their loans restructured that were in foreclosure, okay? Right? True story, right? And I watched, we started marketing, okay? We went out to churches, we went on the street, we, we did interviews, hey, get your loan modification, get your loan modification, right? And I, I saw this with my own very eyes. First time it happened to me, ready for this? We had a couple clients come in, then they referred a couple clients. We made like 10, 15,000 that month. Next month, more clients came in. We made like 17, 20,000 that month, right? And I watched this brother do this, right? All of a sudden, man, he put up billboards. He put, he got on the radio. He got everything. Hey, I'm here. I'm put, he took all the money he had that he was making and he doubled down, right? Everywhere, everywhere, Loma, Loma, Loma. I saw with my own eyes and I, I didn't, I didn't understand it at the time. I didn't fully understand it at the time, right? 20,000 to 40,000 to 50,000 to 100,000. I even saw, I think he got to 200,000 in a month. I'm talking, it was like, 
boom, boom, boom. Literally, I was part of the first time I saw a million dollar business get built from scratch, from scratch, brothers, million dollar business. Because point number one is when you find a money event, when you find your money event, when you find your money event, it could be in your current business, it could be in a business you're trying to figure out. What do you do, brothers? You, you double down and you don't slow down. Now, a lot of people ain't gonna teach you this. I'll get to you right now, go online. They ain't talking about this. You know why? You know why? Because they ain't done it. And if you ain't done it, you can't teach it. When you find the money event, when you find the niche, the time, where it's your time, or that thing happens, you, you steady, be consistent, be consistent, be consistent. And then all of a sudden, you hit a market, you hit an industry, you hit a niche, you double down. And you don't slow down. I don't care what your mama say. I don't care what nobody say. You double down. Because why? Because life happens. When things are good, they don't always stay good. Right? And you can't save your way. You can't save your way to a million. You can't do it. Right? So that's number point number one. Point number one. All right? Hey, if that may... Hey... What y'all feeling? Put in the chat. I want to know what you guys are feeling real quick. Please put in the chat. Let me know what y'all feel. I want to know. I'm going to go to point number two. I want to know what you guys are feeling. Right? Tell me. Right? What are you selling? Put in the chat. You know? Also, yeah, what are you selling? Um, what can you double down on? Yeah, I want to I see real quick what people have to double down, <coughs> down on. Right? All right, I see some of the stuff here, right? My man Marcus said, I feel it's true. He said, I feel it's true. I love it, right? Construction and lawn care. Hey, I love it. Construction and lawn care. Hey, look, lawn care, I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be that moment where a storm comes through, wherever you at, Anton, Antoine, and guess what? When the storm comes through and everybody's yard is a mess, you go crazy. I'm talking, you hit everybody. Everybody, right? Right, catering. Hey, it's a great example. In catering, I saw uh, some, some events happen, especially in, during the pandemic with catering, Eric. All of a sudden with catering, everybody was ordering. Man, I saw the Uber Eats, DoorDash, everybody that had a home catering or some type of small catering thing, guess what, what happened? If they were ready for it and they doubled down, they got paid. They got paid because everyone now was ordering and they wanted different things from different people, right? Legal services. I got my, my man, merchant acquisition, the food truck game, right? Right. Hey, the food truck, man, there's a place. There's a place where your food truck can be positioned. You're going to hit the right club at night. You're going to hit the right amusement park, the right place. And all of a sudden, there's no other food trucks there, and you making thousands a day, thousands a day. And that's when you got to double down. What happens to us, right? We start to make a little bit of money. We start to move the thing forward. And what happens? We start to slow down. We're like, oh, snap. No, 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 no. You will figure it out. You will hire the staff. You will whatever. But when that cash is coming in, you double down, you double down, you double down. Let me get to point number two. I want to be con constant. Man, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate Hey, if y'all feel this, man, put black man in the chat, bro. If y'all feel this, if this is true, if this is facts, put black man in the chat. Let's go. Number two, number two, let's go. All right, number two is once you get a, li a liquidity type of event and you get the cash, right, you have to, Leverage the cash, okay, 
two more cash and or investments. Okay? What am I talking about here, right? So when you get a liquidity event or you find the niche or the place where now you make a whole bunch of money, you ready for this? When you got a million dollars in the bank, it's like you're your own house. You're an asset. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you are. You are now an asset in your own right. So now, just like having a house on the corner, on the block, right? And the banks are willing to lend, right, on that house because it's an asset. The cash you have in the bank is an asset. So now you need to talk. To, and look, I, I, I want to get into more of this for those that are in our circle and doing some stuff and this, that, and the other. We're going to get into a lot of this. I'm going to teach y'all really how to leverage and how to move. Because if you're active in your business and you're working with me on some stuff, I'm going to really teach you how to use the banks and the banking system to your advantage. Okay. But you take, you become an asset because you got the M. And now you leverage it. And now you leverage it to where your cash now right? Your cash now is an asset and now you use it to your advantage, okay? You now use it to your advantage. So when you get the cash, you leverage the cash, right? Now, the hard thing is that, man, I get it. When you get that type of cash, like people are like, man, yo, I want to I want to just, you know, I want to go off. I want to spend a bunch of money and I get that. Hey, do your childhood dream once one or two things. But please understand that you are now an asset. You have to leverage your cash. Cash is an asset. Use these banks, right? Use these banks to your advantage. I'm tired of brothers sitting back talking with some, man, I can't stand banks. I can't stand banks. No, oh, I can't stand these financial institutions, man. I can't stand, brother, are you, look, you, you, you live in this system. You work in this system. Use the system. I'm not telling you to become the system, right? Look, we got a we got a a, a, a book. We got a, a black business funding um, uh, ebook. We'll talk about this later, right? Um, and we're gonna be helping some people do this. And so, I really want you guys to understand: you can use the system, or you can be used by the system. And I want you to be able to use the system. Point number three. Before we hold on. Point number three. Oh, yeah, hold on. No way, no way. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. For you all who are still not clear about how to get to a million, put your industry in the chat, right? And we're gonna do some real life. I'm gonna get some real for all the brothers on here right now. There's a lot of y'all on here right now. I want to get some real life examples. So put your industry in the chat. My team is gonna highlight this, and we're gonna talk about how to double down in your industry. This is what we're gonna do right now. Everyone, I want you to stay here because now. We're going to make all this very practical. All this very practical. Sorry. Let me put number three up here, right? Right? <clears throat> you are now an asset. All right. Okay. All right. So real quick, let's do this real quick. I want to I wanna go, th go through these industries. All right. I mean, I say a preacher, brother. <laughs> they didn't start to call me the economic preacher, man. I I'm just, I ain't no preacher, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure, Matt, we get us. All right. All right, let's go. All right. All right. All right. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Let's do this. All right. Oh, thank you. Non-emergency transportation. James, here we go. Ready? All right, James, let's go. Ready for this? Non-emergency. How can James get to... A million dollar liquidity event. How can James do that? Let's go, James. Ready? So I actually know this space because I operate in this space a little bit myself. <laughs> All right? All right. Here we go, right? So, James, there are zip codes in areas in non emergency transportation that all of a sudden has what I call a tremendous aging population in certain areas. And unfortunately, what is happening now 
is because of the aging population along with millennials. Millennials don't have cars. So usually grandparents depended on their grandchildren because their children are in their middle age. So they're, they're busy, they're working, do all kinds of stuff. The grandchildren usually were the ones that had more free time to take grandma and granddad to places, right? Now that don't exist no more as much. People take Uber, they take Lyft. So James, what I need you to do, I need you to figure out those zip codes, right? And I need you to strategically find out, right? Where that stuff is happening and make sure you are assigned to those areas so that when all those trips coming in, when the insurance companies are giving all those trips, right? You're in position to take every trip and now you're gonna go from two vehicles to four, five vehicles to seven, seven to 10, and you're gonna milk it. You're gonna milk it. You're gonna milk it until it ain't milk no more. You understand what I'm saying? Right? Now emergency transportation. Let's go. Next industry. Let's go. Next industry. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What else we got? Yeah, let's do events. All right. So event coordinator. All right. I got T Dale, event coordinator. All right. How do you do it? Okay. Now your space is a little different, bro. Your space. You're going to have to more than likely, right, to get a massive liquidity event, okay? You're going to have to build some relationships more than likely, right, in the event space. Go, go to, right, they call these like the different cities, right? I actually know a little bit about this, right? It's like the, it's like the city authority conference. In Chicago, they called it like Choose Chicago, um, in Orlando they have them, and the other place they have is these conferences, right? Where essentially, okay, these um, uh, other event planners and other folks go, right, in order to like hobnob with different conference, convention centers and all kind of stuff, right? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna go to these centers, right? And you're gonna find out who's in need of an event coordinator. Who's in need? You wanna find the folks, especially who got like the event planner pulled out last, last like, like the event um, planner pulled out last minute or something like that, right? And what you're gonna do, because they're in need and they really need it done. I gotta make, I don't know what your skill set. I gotta make sure you know what you're doing, but man, you're gonna go in and let's say your fee is 50,000, right? But man, they really need you, bro. They need you. So you're going to go and you're going to say, hey, you're going to quote them high. Hey, you know what? It's going to be 150, but I'm going to get it done. Really? Is it 150? Man, that's a little high. But hey, I can be there in a week. And so you're going to have to literally double down in that moment. And you will experience a liquidity event. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But go to those events, those, those places and find out who's in need. A lot of times they show up. Because they need these other um, event places. They need somebody to show up and help them out. All right, let's go to the next topic. Next topic. All right. So, oh, here we go, right? We have photography. Brothers in photography, right? Don't make sense. It's, it's kind of right, right, right? So people who are in the photography, video, all that kind of stuff, right? Okay? <laughs> My man said this is a mastermind class. You know what, man? I'm just trying to put out good content, bro. I really, look, I just want to see brothers win. I want to put out good content and the, the, the brothers that want to really accelerate, I want you to accelerate, right? But brothers who are in like photography, video, all this stuff, here's the play. You ready for this? You need the partner. So the problem with photography and that, that whole space, like it's labor, but then you got to move around a lot and you got to do all that stuff, right? You need the partner, whether it's a hotel, whether it's a church, right? A school, any place where people go to rent auditorium space or rent spaces for weddings or whatever it is. And you need to go into contract with those venues. And here's the deal. You say, hey, look, this is the deal. Go into contract with me. I'll give you a 20, 30 percent rebate. So if we charge five hundred dollars, right, that church, hotel, venue, they get one fifty. But everybody that comes to this venue, everybody that comes to this venue, they need to, like, you're the exclusive vendor for that venue. 
And that's a contract. If you get that 10, 15, 20 places, let's do the math. What happens, right? Let's say you get 20 places. And let's say you just get one, right? Let's say you get one a week. So now you got 20 places, right? And now let's say after your rebate, you do three, you're making $350, okay? Right? I think I know, I know what the number is, I think. What's that, 70,000? 7,000, 7,000? Right? Somebody, I know somebody be doing the math with me, right? So we're looking at 350 times 20, yeah, 7,000 popped up, right? So now all of a sudden, you're doing $7,000 a week where you're outsourcing and you're doing it, and now you get leverage. One of the challenges with my brothers in photography or video or audio, you don't have any way to get leverage. Now you get leverage. So now, all of a sudden, right, you now go up. Hold on. Once you're winning in this, now you go up. So now instead of 350, now you make 700. You're still doing 20 a week, and now you're doing 14,000 a week. Now, somebody do the math, 14,000 a week times 52 weeks, $728,000. Now, it ain't quite a meal, but that's a liquidity event, right? So I want everyone to know, right? Oh, yeah, somebody said got a detail shop, one to $2,000 a week max. Okay, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. So you got a detail shop. Hey, that's a whole game. I'll tell you something, though. I'll tell you something, though. I want my team to put this up here, right? I'm going to give away, there's a, a, a little book I got. I'm going to give it away. They're going to put up here, there's a, a form you can fill out, right? And you can get a chance to chat or talk, okay? And we'll follow up. You got to put your industry, your name, who you are, what you're doing, okay? The chat, this is free. You put it to apply, kind of a like little form thing, right? And we can go through some of these nuances and some of the things you're trying to do. I want you to know that what I'm talking about, I've lived, I've seen, and I've understood across different industries. I'll tell you, man, I'll tell you guys this one, one space. I never forget, I had this, um, when I, uh, it's this client that came in, he had like $30 million, not 30, yeah, 30 million in cash. Like, actually, they had it cash in suitcases. And we were tripping out. I was like, this, like, bro, how y'all do it with 30 million in suitcases? What y'all selling? You know, right? It was cool. It was, uh, you know, brothers, you know, I call them the brothers with the complexion for the protection, right? And he said, man, you know, we got the family thing, whatever. They were cashing out. These, these, these guys made um, pockets for pool tables. So they, what they did, they went to like, um, they would go to uh, uh, the leather shop, the manufacturer. They would go get the leather for free, right? Cut up the leather sew it together and make it into a pool table for your pocket. If anybody here has ever had a pool table pocket, right? A pool table pocket done, right? You know how hard it is to get it changed and how expensive it is to get it changed, right? You know how hard that is, right? So I saw that, I said, man, it's crazy the amount of things that people can make money in and how they make money, right? And so he told me, he said, yeah, they got a contract where this company wanted them to change like 5,000 pool tables, right? It was like 5,000 pool tables. Hey, I see you got that thing up there. Can we put a, a easier, I know brothers, you can, can you put that in the chat? Okay, it's the link, it's the link, okay. There's a link in the chat. You can fill out that Google form. You wanna fill that out today. But what I'm doing right now is that I'm creating an inaugural, what I call like an inaugural um, group, right? Of black men. And what we're gonna do we're gonna show the world. I'm so tired of this idea that like, man, black man, we can't get together. Or black man, blah, 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 whatever it is. And all this stuff, and it's like, anybody, anybody, one of us that's a successful, right? Is like an anomaly, okay? If we're really successful, it's an anomaly. Or we gotta be in athletics, or we gotta be in entertainment, or something to that degree to be successful. And that's not true. It's not true. OK, don't believe that hype. It's not true. And there's a lot of brothers making a lot of money. And a lot of times they'd be quiet. 
I just happen to be at a time in my life right now where the brothers who are in their 20s, I can talk to you. The brothers in your 50s and 60s, I can talk to you. And I'm like, look, let me take this moment right now. Let's build up a million black men. A million black. Do you understand? Look, look. Do you understand what would happen if we presented together? If we let's say not a million, let's say a thousand black men over the next year, year and a half, two years, who all got the bag? Do you under do do, do you understand the deals that we can do? Do you understand the industries that we can start to slowly take over? The impact that we can have. Look, next time y'all see me, we're going to talk about this, but I haven't even gotten into the Africa manufacturing boom that's coming, right? The Africa manufacturing boom, that's going to, man, create, oh my gosh. Imagine, so imagine Asia and how China, people don't know this. China had 1.4 billion people. 95% of their population was in poverty. China has put in 20, 25 years, 20, 25 years, almost a billion people in their middle class in their country. And guess how they did it? Through manufacturing. And all the, many of the Chinese who were in America who were in Brazil, who were in all of that stuff. Yes, go grab a time on the calendar. If you want to talk more, get that other resource, grab a time on the calendar, right? But China, true story, right? They put a billion people in their middle class today because of manufacturing. And because the Chinese brothers who were in Brazil, in America, they were in uh, Canada, all that stuff, they started trading products, right? My cousin, my brother, whoever it is, they're over in China making the stuff. They're selling it to Walmart and they're selling millions of units, millions of units, millions of units, right? That is called what? A liquidity event, baby, right? So I want us to get into these liquidity events, into these spaces, or look at your space and find out where you can get your liquidity event. Brothers, I'm telling you. No, oh, I'm going to tell you guys a story. I'll tell you the story that happened to me. Now, mind you, I've made money here and there. For you guys to know my whole background. I'm just going to tell you the whole background for y'all that don't know. Okay? David Anderson does not come from privilege. David Anderson, right, did not get put on. I told y'all this weekend. Stop that whole thing about being put on. That ain't a real thing. I know we hear these in rap songs. No, we hear it in a rap song. I know we hear whatever. Cause now all that is, look, we're talking. Look, no, 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 no shade. I was with Lil Baby this last year. He was on tour. My boy does security. And so I was with him and talking, and he's doing real good. And you got future. You got all kinds of guys. They're making their money. I look, I love you, right? But that idea of being put on is because your guy all of a sudden got popular and got famous. Okay. He gets a contract. Okay a liquidity event, sign on bonus, 360 deal, whatever it is, right? And so what did he did? He brought his boys with him on tour. And they're like, man, we got put on, right? But that, bro, that, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't it. I like LeBron. I like what LeBron did. You know what LeBron did? And look, pass off to LeBron, bro, LBJ. Like, hey, I'm, a, I'm an MJ guy. I'm from Chicago. But let's talk, baby. LBJ, I got respect. Now, real quick in the chat, I just want to talk. Hey, we're not going to get off this money. I just want to know real quick. Jordan or LBJ? Put that in the chat. I need to know. I need to know where you stand. I need to know who I'm talking to. Jordan or LBJ? Put it in the chat. Jordan or LBJ? MJ or LBJ? I need to know who, who I got in the building, baby. Let's see who we got in the building. Who with LBJ and who with Jordan? Let me see. What's, who 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 gonna win this one now? I don't know, team. Y'all tell me what they say. My man said, "LOL." My boy said, "Jordan, both." <laughs> he said, "Jordan forever." Okay, I got some LBJs. I got some LBJs. Okay, all right. I got some MJs. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. MJ. All right. Cool. Cool. Hey. Hey. I'm, I'm Chicago, baby. I'm MJ for life. Hey. 
ain't nobody. And I like LeBron. I like LeBron, but I'm telling you, LBJ, hey, I respect him. Well, I like what he did. He took the brothers in a circle he grew up with, and what he said was this. Look, bro, I can't, I can't just put you on, right? But what y'all can do, y'all can learn, right, a certain space, right, or a certain space, right? He got, he got cast right in media. He got other guys who got into being a sports agent, all that type of stuff, but it wasn't being put on. They, they learned the skill and they came to the table with the skill set that allowed, okay, that allowed them to, like, you know what I'm saying, make the bread. They came with a skill set. You see what I'm saying? Right? That's the important part. So no, no thing was being put on. So here it is, right? So David Anderson told my story, right, came in the hood, mom, sick, all that stuff. I read the 600 books over four years. I self-educate myself. I had my Malcolm X experience, okay? Then I say, okay, let me go follow this path. Let me go do what I call the privileged white boy thing. That's what I did. All the, a lot of guys I work with, they went to the, the top prep schools, right? They went to like schools that cost 50, 60,000 a year since they were five or six years old. And I was sitting there competing with them. I'm like, okay, okay, all right, you know? And so I'm in these spaces, I'm moving, I'm making some money, I'm saving some money. I'm making some money, saving some money, trying to move out, right? I go to China, right? Do my China thing. Come back, work for this corporation, mostly white corporation in America. I'm like, yo, I'm about to be a Fortune 500 CEO. What happened? I had to deal with the politics, and I'll go to that story a whole nother time, right? So I'm making money, got it. And look, saving, stacking. Like, I'm, I'm making, I'm doing well. Like, look, don't get me wrong. I'm doing well, Right? I technically have become, you know, a millionaire on paper. I was a millionaire on paper with some cash. You know what I'm saying? By the time I was like 30, it was like, cool, right? But all of a sudden, I'll tell you about this one, one event that really, really killed it. I had other events that were great, too. This one event killed it. So I get this call from a, from a, a brother. I'm asking your brother. You call him brother. We're talking, right? We're chopping it up. We're talking, right? And we're talking, and his, his girl is in the background. And she hears us talking. She's like, yo, David, can you do that? I say, yeah, you know, I, I've been in overseas for a minute. I've been in, you know, working overseas, China, everything else. She's like, if you can do that, yo, our company, we need, like, millions of that. We need it right now. If you can execute that, we need that. I said, you do? You really? I said, y'all really write, you, you writing that check? She said, we writing that check. And I kid you not. I kid you not. I made, I had a liquidity event, liquidity event. I made millions in a month, two months, millions. And when I, and I'm telling you that story because what we have to understand is, right, I tell you guys, you will have a million dollar opportunity every three to five years if you, if you pay attention. You're going to have a billion dollar opportunity every 10 to 15 years if you pay attention. I'm not blowing you no smoke. You have seen this already in your life. You saw a million dollar opportunity pass you by, <laughs> right? You saw it. You thought about it like, hmm, that might, that might, that might win, right? You didn't get in. You didn't double down. You didn't leverage, right? And it passed you by. It's okay. There's another one coming. I want you to sit back. Hold on. There's another one coming. How many in here? Real, real quick question, right? Real estate, right? Check it as real estate, okay? Real estate, you saw an area, you saw an area in real estate and you was like, man, that area might pop. That area might grow. But you didn't invest, but you saw that area pop. Put a one in the chat. I just want to see who I'm talking to, right? You saw it. You saw it. You were like, oh, that area, that area, I think that might change. That might, okay, that might, that might move. I should buy a house over there. 
but you didn't do it. Put a one in the chat. It's okay. Hey, the reason why I built this space for brothers, man, this is a safe space for us. Because as Melvin said in the interview the other day, he said, look, our victory comes in our vulnerability. We don't have to know it all, okay? I don't know it all. Listen to me. I don't know it all. What I do know, I am sharing. What I do know, I'm going to impart. But I don't know it all. But the vulnerability is what brings our victory, right? My brother Melvin, bro, he had a nine-figure. Listen to me. He had a nine-figure liquidity event, right? And he said in the interview, man, you know what? These numbers, these figures, we were hiring, right? We were hiring, and all of a sudden, we couldn't, like, they founded my L. They were making money. We couldn't keep people. They kept quitting. We had to get better at training, better at leadership, everything else. But you know what they did? They doubled down. He said, man, people are getting orders. They like the product. They just said, okay, like, we, we're bringing the jugs. Bring the 50-gallon 50, the 50 jug in the house, in the garage, and we're going to just... We're going to pour it ourselves. Oh, wait. I'm going to tell you all about another liquidity, a liquidity event. Before I tell you, this liquidity event was crazy. I was in California. I was in California. I met this couple. They had this real beautiful house, everything. The guy was a lawyer. He was a lawyer, right? Hey, thank you, God. Everyone stand on, man. Thank you. I hope I'm giving some good information, man. We, we got to get, man, just put black man in the chat. If you're enjoying this, just put black man in the chat, man. I appreciate y'all. Real talk. I'm going to get this last story. This is the story to you guys. So I'm in California. I'm in California, right? And I'm at this, I'm with this, this, this couple, right? I'm at this couple's house. And, uh, it's a real nice house. Like, it's a, like, matter of fact, they were living down the street from Cedric the Entertainer, and I saw Smokey Robinson. I see saw Smokey Robinson walking down the street. I was like, Smokey! <laughs> you know, Smokey don't age, but that boy still look, he like, he's 35. Like, I don't know what Smokey do, but Smokey Robinson, boy, that boy don't age, right? <laughs> so, Motown for life, all right? So, I'm like, man, why did y'all do whatever? He's like, yeah, I was a lawyer for years. You know, he was a lawyer. You know, he made decent money. You make decent money as a lawyer. Like, like being a lawyer is a good lifestyle, but it don't make you rich. How many lawyers we got in the building, baby? You know, put law in the chat. If you're a lawyer, put law in the chat, right? So we're talking, and I'm like, man, how did y'all make y'all money? What happened? He said, yeah, I was a lawyer for years. You know, we did okay. We had good money, right? And he says, well, um, remember that, remember that, uh, uh, remember that book called The Secret? I said, yeah, everybody know, yeah, of course I know The Secret. Everybody know The Secret, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? So he's talking about The Secret, right? He said, yeah, so what happened was, this is a true story. So this is before The Secret comes out, okay, and and, and oh, can you say that statement, right? Bo the vulnerability becomes our victory. Our vulnerability becomes our victory as men, right? Our vulnerability becomes our victory, okay? All right, here we go. So here we go. So I want, I want you guys to catch this story so you guys can apply this, right? Secret comes out, okay? Secret comes out. The guy reaches out because they heard about the secret at some book thing. A girl was from Australia. Whoever wrote the secret was from Australia, okay? It was from Australia, okay? The girl, they call the girl in Australia. They call her, the lady who wrote the book, The Secret, in Australia, okay? So they call her in Australia, and they say, hey, can we be your American distributor for The Secret? The Secret had a book, and they had a DVD. True story a book and a DVD. She didn't have any distributor. She said, sure. What's the split? They said, well, she said, if you give me, if you sell it for, I think they was, it was selling, the DVD was selling for like $35. And so they were making like, they gave her 15 and they kept 20. It was something like that, right? For every CD, right? The girl gets on Oprah. 
<laughs> the girl gets on Oprah. Listen to me. Listen to me, black man. The girl gets on Oprah. Oprah. He said, David, we took our house. They bought blank DVDs. Blank DVDs had them stacked everywhere, right? They bought four or five computers, right? They were basically like in there <laughs> burning their own, burning the DVD. Because when you made an order, if you were America making the order, they were the ones, right, that had to process the order. He said they sold millions of the secret and it all happened in like, it was like, I think he said like six to nine months. Anybody remember the secret? Remember when the secret got hot? Y'all remember that? That whole idea of like, you know, um, uh, uh, the whole secret idea, right? Law of attraction, all of that stuff. And look, there's truth. Manifestation, there's truth to the law of attraction for sure, right? What you think, you will experience. What the mind can conceive, you will believe. If you think about something, right, you will continue to experience that. Some of us are broke or busted or disgusted in our lives because we are living in a poverty mindset. We are living in a, in, in a defeated mindset. And as a black man, especially when you're in you know, Africa, America, all these places where you've been colonized, discriminated against, over-sexualized, over-criminalized, all these things that we've gone through, bro, we get beat up. As black men, bro, we get beat up in, in these countries, in these places, in these systems that we didn't even build for ourselves. I'm just being 100 with us. We didn't build these for ourselves. Someone else built this and then we all of a sudden, right, Inherited it. We woke up like this is what we got to do. Okay. But so the law of attraction is real. But man, when he told me this story, I was like, again, I was younger at the time. I knew it, but I'm giving you an example of a liquidity event. Literally in six to nine months, that man had been a lawyer for 25 years and he had not made the money being a lawyer that he made in those six to nine months because right Look, look, I want you to know that you can do it too. Our representation matters, right? Like you don't have to know it all. Your vulnerability will be your victory. So what I want to do, okay, what we want to do in this movement of one million black men, right? Whatever your space is, whatever your area is, I'm here to encourage you, but I'm also here to help you. Right. If you're trying to put the pieces together, you ain't got to know it all. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't have to know it all. I'm telling you. Right. You can you can follow a path. Keep showing up. Keep getting the information. Ask questions. Participate. Participate. OK. And continue to get the information. I want to see you, man, every single time because I'm not pulling no smoke. I'm going to give you the real, the real as much as I can so that you can actually win, win. I told you guys, right? There are levels to work with me. There are levels to the game. Look, everybody don't do the same thing. You're not at the same place. That's okay. Yesterday, talking to her brother, man, like, like whatever level you're at, hey, hey, if whatever level you're at, work with me, work with me. If you can't, I just expect to see you. Just keep showing up. Keep doing those reps. Keep lifting that iron, baby. Keep lifting that iron. Keep lifting that iron. Keep doing it. Like, participate in the chat so I know who you are, and I can keep doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. But I want you guys to know today that to put a million in the bank, you got to have a liquidity event, okay? So whatever business you're in, whatever it is, you got to think creatively. Now, look, I'm going to be excited when we get the testimonials I'm going to be excited. Boy, wait, like there's some of you right now, you, you you looking at your business or whatever you're doing, and you like, yo, I never met, I had a chance to double down. And I didn't take it. That's okay. That's okay. You didn't know, right? You didn't know, but now you know, right? 
when the money event happens, double down. Do not slow down. Tell your girl, tell the kids, tell them all, hey, look, I'm locking myself in. Hey, y'all might not see me for a minute, okay? Y'all not, that's okay, though. That's okay. That's okay. I'll be back. Let me get this bag, right? And I'll be back. Let me get this money. I'll be back, okay? Let me go make sure you secure, honey. Let me go make sure you secure. I'll be back. Let me make sure our kids, the generation, the next generation of our children are going to eat so they don't have to be given the fish, right? And not we're not just teaching them the fish. We're teaching them how to own the pond, baby. We're going to teach them how to own the pond so the next generation's fish. You see what I'm saying? Like, whatever you got to do, I see y'all in the chat, man. I appreciate y'all. Man, black man, that's right on, brother. Like, straight up, whatever it takes. Because when you double down, you can't slow down. You can't slow down. Because guess what? When it's good, it's not always going to stay good. When it's bad, it ain't always bad. But when it's good, it ain't always going to stay good. Though that, that, that husband and wife, when that secret thing happened, Look, this man was an accomplished lawyer, but he ain't had, he ain't make the money he was making when that secret hit. <laughs> when that secret hit, oh, he said, oh, screw that. Look, I'll holler at y'all later. Hey, don't call me. Some of you guys, this is real talk. Some of you guys, you need to uh, like eliminate certain people in your life because that negativity they give you, yo, you can't deal with that. I know he's your homie. I, I know that's your man, a hundred grand. I understand that's your man 100 grand, but his thinking, okay, his thinking is not ready for where you trying to go. He ain't ready for where you trying to go. And too many of us, look, I'm not saying you got to not love him. I'm not saying you got to leave him. But too many of us, we drag along brothers who ain't ready. It's okay that they're not ready. It's okay that they not ready. Guess what? You get ready, you get the bag, and then when you come back and he need he he need fifty dollars, you like, hey, you know what? Hey, bro, no problem, man. It's fifty dollars, hey, bro. But hey, you you can get on this path though, right? You ain't gotta you ain't gotta take my fish. I can teach you how to fish, and I can teach you how to own the pond. Look, man, we out here, one million black men. Look, if you want to get more information, you want to do some stuff, please scan. They got a scan thing up there. Hit the link. Look, I'm serious about this. We're going to do this inaugural thing. Brother, this inaugural thing we're going to do. Look, you're going to get a lot of good information from me. You're going to get a lot of good information from me because we're going, to, we're going to move this. We're going to build this thing. Matter of fact, for you all who have not liked or subscribed to YouTube and Facebook, can you do that for me right now? I just want to make sure. Please subscribe and like on YouTube or follow us on YouTube, Facebook. We're also now on Instagram, uh, also 1 Million Black Men on Instagram as well. Please follow us, right? We are going to change the world, man. Like for us, like I'm doing this for us, by us. I got a lot of people that's like, man, Dave, bro, you should just, man, don't limit it, man. Go, go, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like you work with everybody. I said, look, I look, I do work with everybody. Look, I care about everybody. I'll do. I'll make money with anybody. But I know for a fact that there are brothers here and listening, and you've been waiting for my voice. Look, I'm nothing special, right? I'm no savior, okay? I'm not going to claim to be more than what I am. But I'm telling you, you've been waiting for my voice. You've been listening to other people, and you've been like, man, something ain't right. Something ain't right with that. No, that's, that's game right there, man. That's just game, right? Because you game, recognize game, right? But you've been waiting for this voice to come out. I'm here now, and I'm hoping to give you the keys, right, to win. I want to give you the keys to win. Whether or not, man, you work with me or not, if, if you get these keys, if you got the pieces and the keys, but please do me a favor. If you go win, man, please come back and tell your story. Please man, put it in the Facebook. <clears throat> put it in the comment. There's going to be a brother here. I'm telling you right now, a brother here. Just off of understanding this principle about the liquidity event, there's going to be a brother right now 
you're going to have, we got hundreds of brothers, man, on this thing right now. There's going to be a brother that has a liquidity event, and we're going to need your story. I want to hear it because you hadn't thought about it. You were like, yo, wait. Oh, that did happen that way. And now you're ready. Now you're ready. Now you're ready. I want you to make your bread. That's This is the lie that they tell about getting to a million brothers. Look, you can work, do good work, have a good business, and you can have a good lifestyle. That's, that's, that's real talk. You can have a good lifestyle. But when you're trying to get to the bag bag, that 1M, when you look at those seven digits inside the, the bank account, man, that's life changing. So I want you guys to experience that. I want you guys to have that. Look, text, scan, whatever the case is, I'm ready. We're going to have this inaugural thing. We, Oh, yeah. Yeah, real quick. They're going to play a video real quick to remind you guys of the things that I've done. I know some of you guys are new. Some of you guys just came in and y'all are new. Y'all don't even know me. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Are they playing that video? Play that video for everybody real quick. Appreciate y'all. David Anderson has become synonymous with global black wealth. Whether he's shaping policies at the World Economic Forum, playing key roles within political circles on both sides, mastering the art of building unshakable wealth on an international scale, or breaking down barriers so that black men around the world can win. David is the world's best kept financial secret weapon. From the ghettos of Southside Chicago to the Obama White House, to the homes of billionaire moguls, David's receipts stretch well beyond million dollar bank accounts. African royal families or celebrity inner circles. But I believe that they did something that all of us can do. David's true gift is in single-handedly positioning everyday brothers to become global millionaires. Why? Because it's about damn time we own what's ours and have a real seat at the table. Money, power, respect. Look, welcome back. Look, real quick. Um, I love it. Thank for all that's still here. Neil, still here. Darren, still here. My guy, Charlie, still here. Larry, I see you. Do what you love. The money will follow. Still here. Thanks for all you guys who are still here coming in. He's like, man, when's the next class? You know what, man? I kind of like, I'll be honest with you guys. I kind of like this idea of like, like, I, we're going to have scheduled stuff. It's going to be scheduled. But I kind of like when I get the feedback from you guys and I know like, yo, okay, this, that, the other, you know what I'm saying? Like, like right now um, we got a lot of feedback about the whole real estate space. So right now I'm working, it's in, it's in the thing. You know, we talked about truck and some other stuff, the whole real estate space. We're going to basically like, like um, I want to call it real estate the right way. Right. Cause there's a lot, I'm going to tell you what happens in real estate. I'm just going to talk to you guys 100 um, what I've seen is that you get somebody and basically they somehow, you know, they, they, they get lucky and flipping a house or they do something. And all of a sudden they want to run out and teach people, Hey, come flip this house, come to my seminar and do this, this, that, and blah, blah, blah. Right. So I was looking at some folks and I wanted somebody and some people who like, who was really winning and black in real estate, like really winning. Just so you guys know, all these shows, the flip my house, this and that and the other, those, those people don't even do real estate. They're personalities. Like there's other contractors that do the flipping and they're just personalities, right? That basically like show up and they become TV stars, but they're not really in the real estate game. They're not really, most of the people who are really, I'm gonna tell y'all, and this is a true story. This is a true story, right? Most of the people that are really winning, they don't have time to do this or teach. They don't, right? They, they, and look, I didn't. For years, man, for years, people were like, man, Dave, you should do this. Man, Dave, you should do that. Man, Dave, you, I said, bro, why do that? I'm making money doing what I'm doing. I'm winning. Why would I do that? That don't make sense, right? And then it hit me. It was like, I think I had a, it was a, some friend in my life, somebody I knew. And they had like 
Uh, it was listening to somebody. They had uh, oh, it's funny. They actually <laughs> the story is, bro. They had paid some person like a hundred thousand dollars. I kid you not. And they paid somebody a hundred thousand dollars, and it was like some mindset, like some really some garbage. Like I mean, it's cool. Like look, we all gotta get our mindsets right. But they paid them like a hundred thousand. I said, what? What? Right. And I was like, yo, that, that ain't, but you cannot, I tell like what I've learned is that you cannot get upset. Right. When you decide to sit on the sideline. Right. You know what I'm saying? You, it, it's, you know, we're all spectators in different sports, but you cannot get upset when you decide to sit on the sideline. And I say, you know what? I'm not going to sit on the sideline no more. Right. Many people are like, they, they, they're reaching out. They're like, yo, where did you come from? Who are you? Like, how did you, like, what? Are, I ain't never heard stuff like this, right? Okay, right? Like, um, hold on, somebody said real quick, that's, sir, I hope you're really going uh, back on your words to help us uh, black men really go get the bag, real talk. Oh, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, hey. <laughs> Listen to me. I, I, I'm committed to this. I told somebody, my commitment, here's my commitment, right? At least for the time period that God has me doing this, this is real talk. This is my commitment to you guys, right? One million black men, it's gonna be more than me. It's gonna, I got some other brothers, man. Y'all gonna be like, yo, this is crazy. Like, one million black men will become the authority on black male success. That I promise you. We will become the authority on black male success through the advice and teaching, also through curriculum and also through real mentorship, right? Um, and 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 <clears throat> and 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 I I I, I, I want to hey, hey, I want you guys to text me what you're learning, right? Because in order to give back to y'all, I need to know what resonates, what's good on that text. Just text me what, you know, on that text about the team, right? Um, you can text, obviously, to apply to get mentored, but also I want to know what you're learning, the things that resonate, the things that are good, so I can continue to, like, curate, right, the content, curate the things. I got things in my brain I know. I know a lot, right? I mean, guys, I've worked across the world. I've been to, um, not bragging, I've been to, like, 52, 54 countries. I've done business in 18 countries, right? Um, just to give you guys an insight, I worked uh, with a president in South America um, because of some of the politics. He couldn't have a, like a private plane. So we worked on creating a plane that was a combo plane. It was half private jet. <laughs> it was half cargo. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I I've had a lot of good experiences. And that's why I can stay. I can say to you guys across the diaspora, right? It's our time. Like, I want you to know, it's our time. Like, if we don't, as a people, if we don't take this time to really not just get rich, but to get wealth creation for seven generations, man, we're going we gonna, to we gonna lose some stuff. You got to remember, man, this thing of colonization and slavery, this thing has only, like, like, this thing has only been around for a couple hundred years. Before that, man, you guys know we were kings and queens in our own land. We were doing a whole lot of things. And those are, are, that are in the motherland, right? That are in the motherland, you know? Like all the resources, the gold, the silver, the ivory, the, the cobalt. You know cobalt right now? All this electric car stuff. All the cobalt comes from Africa. All the cobalt. So they're like, oh, we going green, going green, going green. But again, all the minerals, it's all coming from Africa. You know what I'm saying? And so African manufacturing, right? Understanding black services, black products, all of this stuff is going to continue to morph and move, okay? And if you're not prepared, if you're not ready for what the event, he said, well, we have an event to have a meet and greet. Man, Darren, hey, you know what? We, we, we're going to put that on the calendar. We got to we gotta put what, what I tell people um, is that everything I told my team too, I said, look, there's this expectation, right? The expectation is that, see, in, in this thing, again, a business in the world, 
it's all about us basically like, how can I put this? It's reciprocity, right? It's a circle, it's reciprocity. But in order to give good content and to do it, right? The brothers who go through and participate in like our curriculums or our events and all that stuff that we set up, right? All of that is just circular. It's going to go back into how we build and how we build. So, you know, what I saw in the success space, in the, in the success world, was that there's a lot of people out there talking to us, but they don't have our experiences. And we're giving our money to places where that money's not going to circulate. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you do understand, like, one million black men will, can be a resource for many of you and us, okay, for like, you know, those that got teenagers, those that got sons, those that got, it, it will be a resource. I mean, I was talking to a brother yesterday and they were talking about, hey man, like when I pass on this wealth, when I pass on my legacy, I want my kids to like be educated properly. And I know the school system ain't gonna do that. So I want, look, look I, I want it to be written in like, hey, to get this wealth, you need to go to one million black men. You need to take their curriculum and understand business, right? Understand economics so you can sustain the legacy. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be giving back, right? In order to teach y'all, you know what I'm saying? Right? And, and some of y'all need it and you need to show up to get the content. Like you need to show up and get the content. L look, there's levels of showing up, right? Look, you can join VIP. You can come for free. You can pay for certain things. Like, we just need us in the building. And look, and look, there's going to be different times in your life. Not like, there's a brother right now, you're doing really well. Like, this is good for you. It keeps you thinking. It's inspirational for you. It's good, right? So you're not in a need of something. But a year from now, six months from now, all of a sudden, you experience a crazy layoff, right? And now you got to get at it. And now you're going to our Black Man's Business School, <laughs> right? You're like, hey, now it's time to go because, you know, I got to go. You know what I'm saying? So so we're going to – um oh, thanks, Myra. It's about, about the curriculum. Um, well, that's one of those things where the curriculum, what we're doing is that uh, we got that kind of in, in our group. But text the number. Text the number and you can get some more information about that as well, right? We're getting more systemized. We're going to get things down. Um, I'm planning to uh, do, we're going to do something real large in June. I'm going to be asking you guys to share um, certain content. Some of you guys might even become, depending on if we do like different large events, uh, I'll be asking you guys probably to be even in affiliates for that, for like large events and things that we do. But, man, we're just going to continue, like, real talk. We're going to continue to try to, what I would call, build this thing, but build it right. Um, can he talk about centralized and decentralized and how uh, the CBDC and, and failed now? Oh, I love this comment. Look, I'm going to talk about that next time. Uh, I, know, I know where you're going. I know where you're going with the whole, you know, Fed now and decentralization and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, but, but we're, we're going to talk about that uh, next time. I want to get into that. So thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. But, but let me talk about it real quick. I'm just going to give you a little bit of this real quick. Right. Um, he said to me, none of this will matter if we remain in the current fiat capitalist system. So here we go. Right. Um, we're experiencing Tim, one of the cast, like a, a cosmic shift, Right and what the world will experience. Now, we'll talk about BRICS real quick. BRICS is not new, been around since 2006. It started actually at Goldman Sachs, the term BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and then South Africa. Um, what we're experiencing, and I, I can't get into deep deal, but I want, I want everyone to be educated on this, right? What we're experiencing economically is, so after World War II, okay, America, the reason why we did so well after World War II is because we were the only game in town. Germany was in shambles. Britain was in shambles. Russia, Japan was like, we bombed the crap out of them, right? And so after the 1940s, 50s, like, American, we did all the manufacturing, right? We did most of the products. We helped rebuild. 
Like, it's crazy. We, like, bombed Japan and then, like, helped build their country. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, all of this stuff. So America's the only game in town from roughly, like, 1950, right, to roughly, let's say, 1990, 1980, 1990. So 30, 40 years, we're on the world stage. We're the only game in town, right? And so there's no competition. But then all of a sudden, what happened? Right. China started to get stronger. Germany started to come back. So all these countries, I told you guys, life is like a fight. It's a competition. It's a competition. It's a competition. So all these countries, all all these countries started basically coming back. So now it wasn't enough for us just to, like, have a simple education, a high school education, all this kind of stuff. Right. We had to compete on a global scale, right? Now, when you look at the guys in China, when they were coming up or in Germany, like, they were hungry. They were super hungry, right? Malaysia, um, Vietnam, right? Parts of, you know, obviously even Libya. I'll get into Libya later. That's a whole different conversation. Like, they were engaged. And so what happened was that the world got more competitive. But unfortunately, um, America, like, we... We, we haven't been as competitive. Like, we've been sitting on our laurels. Most people in America, they can't even tell you what Saudi Arabia is. They can't even point China out on the map. They can't even point out Japan. They definitely can't point out African countries, right? So the problem that we've had is that we have been now in a state in America where we thought, man, hey, we're the baddest, we're the greatest, we're the smartest, all this stuff, and the rest of the world caught up. So what is happening now is that, right? And then black men, what I want to do with black men is this. I want to educate you all globally, globally, right? Like, 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 like in that comment, you're right. You're right. That's why I want to come back and I want to educate us globally, right? So because... What, what the, the things that we're missing, the nuances that we're missing is that we got to understand how to play this game from our position. But like we all we got literally, I like tell them, we all we got literally like if 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 we don't if we don't get together, start to make money together. OK, make let's go, baby make money together, man, we're going to get left behind more than what we are now. If we don't get together, do deals together, build business together, offer products together, partnerships, joint ventures, right? Get the right, what's back there? Education. Get the right education. The right education. Okay? We are going to be in trouble. So, Look, I want to do my part to make sure this is good, but, but, man, I appreciate, man, I appreciate everybody being here. We're going to schedule more things. Please look out. Keep your text together. Keep your email together. Um, we, yeah, yeah. Hey, real quick, I just want you to real quick, man, put a a M in the chat. The letter M. No, N N. In, as in next. Put next in the chat if you're going to join me next time. I just want to know who I got in the building. Put a next in the chat if you're going to join me next time. I just want to know. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Put a next in the chat if you're going to join me next time. Man, I appreciate you guys. This is what's up. I'm going to keep doing this. I, uh, let me ask you guys a question. Do you like the like nighttime stuff? Because I felt like as men during the daytime, we're like you know what I'm saying? Busy. We're taking care of our families. We uh, we hustling. We at work. Whatever. I feel like this like this time was really good, right? With this time, like like it's eight central. Let me see, Tony. Thank you for Meta participating. Mitchell, thank you. Uh, James, Kevin. Oh, that's, that's my cousin, man. That's my cousin, man. What's up, Kevin? Hey, welcome, brother. That's my cousin. Hey, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, um, like, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see y'all, man. Look, we're going to keep doing this, doing it at night, make it happen. But, man, look, like I always say, I'm going to see y'all at the top because <laughs> the bottom 
is just way too crowded. I right, will see you at the top, black man. Hey, text the word topic to that number if you have different comments or different interests and different topics so we can be prepared for that. Please do that. And then, obviously, if you want to look at working together on some stuff or working with different industries, look, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. I am selective. I'm going to be saying, you know, I am selective in the sense that I cannot work with everybody, nor do I, you know, should I, right? But um, I have assisted with people going to millions, also people scaling in different levels. And so, especially for folks who are looking at going global, man, I'm your man, 100 grand. Um, if you're in that ideation stage, right, we're trying to build some things to help you go through that. If you're in a transition stage, like you just, you're transitioning, you're pivoting. We got some stuff to help you go through that. So I'm being very intentional about this area of my life and make sure that this, this organization thrives, not just survives, but make sure that it thrives for black men around the world. Man, again, I'll see you black man. I love it, man. God bless y'all and peace. Hey, y'all play that, play that, play that poem real quick. Um, our anthem, if you could uh, play, please play our anthem. Uh, calling, calling all black men, right? Calling, call. Hey, how many of y'all like our spoken word? Yeah. How many of you all like, are y'all rock with? We got a little Afro beat. We got someone like a little 90s hip hop beat in there. If y'all like that, put a fire in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Put a fire in the chat. If you like what our uh, spoken word, our anthem is, that's going to be our theme, at least for this year. Appreciate y'all. Calling, calling, calling all black men. This is a call to action. This is a call to action, an action call. Calling, calling, calling all black men. This is a call to action. This is a call to action, an action call for one million black men. I am crazy to put you on a call path to win. This is not a Zoom call or a call on Facebook Live. Though we are virtual, we are live. Not a call on TikTok like MLB black men. We are on the clock. Not a call from Snapchat. Move back my back. We are on first base to Isaac Hayes Jr. fan base. We have an eye lock on third base. Grand Slam, not a call from Instagram as we don't need validation with blue checks. We are the true checks. We do checks. We write checks. We are the right checks. We do family checks. We check in on our sons and our daughters. We are a black men who walks on waters because our children like to place time. We are black men who face time. Let's face time. This is still not a call from an Android or an iPhone. It is extraterrestrial to phone home. I know sometimes, black men, we have to travel around the world to be appreciated at home. But you are not alone. You are in the eat one, teach one, green zone. Where the elusive weapon is the truth. We are the black truth. We are Paul Pierce, the truth. We are the loot. We are one million black men strong. We will get along as we landline. We walk across their blue and red line. Now this call is from a landline with rotary numbers and a coiled cord. We are one million black men on one accord. This cord and phone transmits a dial tone. Whether a local call or a call of long distance, regardless of the distance, it connected us. Social media unconnected us. Our homes need us. They sold feed us and not just food that give us niggas itis. I write this, our homes bleed sweat tears for us. Black men, it is up to us. It is on us not to just procure the bag. Boo the blessed one, share it with me. Get the info under your afro, bro. And establishing sovereignty to be a one unite bank for economic just us. Black men, we must set up a family trust to an estate because right now everything is at stake because we can't lead from behind from your behind to your mind 
They are public with their relevance as they use artificial intelligence in this age of information. Elon Musk bought Twitter to gather more of our information. So if I have to be the Starlink, I will break the Starlink for one million black men. But I won't condone our culture with misuse of our information. So I grant you David Anderson for this financial literacy education. DA went from shy South Side streets to JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs on Wall Street. From Chicago State to Harvard. At 19, he fathered the economics in his family house. DA served in President Obama administration at the White House. He lived in China for three and a half years, learning the Chinese economy, the renminbi. To the British pound, black men, let's get this pound. To the European euro, we NBA step into the euro. To the Uganda chilling, black men, let's be empowered by our billing and be willing to learn and understand. Money is just a tool to build unshakable wealth. Seven generations deep that DA will teach that we can compete in an economy beyond that's local. Black men, we must think global. So I present to you David Anderson to put you on this financial literacy path to win. Welcome to the movement. One 